It is to deal with this worrying situation, conscript fathers, that I ask you to approve the Lex Arcana, a law tasking the Praetorian Guard with the enlistment of 600 custodes. These men and women of the Empire will be given full autonomy of action, and they will constitute the first nucleus of the Cohors Auxiliara Arcana. The custodes shall act in small groups, study the most inexplicable phenomena, investigate the dark alleys of our cities, infiltrate forbidden cults, and cross the Vala in search of ancient sources of knowledge. They will be chosen from among the most promising young people of the Empire and recruited from every province or social class. They will receive specific training aimed at fully developing their natural aptitudes and predispositions. The power of the heroes of the past shall be infused in their veins, and the magic of the Empire shall be at their service. Thanks to the Cohors Auxiliara Arcana, we will once again collect the fragmented knowledge of the peoples and purify it to create a consistent, universal system that will fully permeate the secrets and mysteries of magic and reach its full dominion. We thought we had already completed our mission, but we were deceiving ourselves. Today our mistake is clear. Forms of magic hitherto unknown. Recite the dispatches coming from the borders of the cities in turmoil. Rome cannot admit the concept of an unknown. Therefore the custodes shall act in the name of knowledge. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mildra, and I will be your gaming monk for the evening. Last week, we discussed a venture into alternate history Rome, stretching into current year but with a technological leap that would appear to border the far future in its appearance, along with technology that borders on magic. This week, we'll be diving into a more magical spin on the concept, albeit a bit more grounded as a work of historical fantasy instead of full-on space opera, a little less over-the-top in both setting and in storytelling in a sense. The name of this subject is Lex Arcana. Set in an alternative 5th century Roman Empire, where mastery over the arts of divination allowed the Empire to dodge the events that would have led to its downfall. The player characters are custodes of the Cohors Auxiliara Arcana, a chapter of the Praetorian Guard appointed to research and investigate supernatural phenomena to identify and or stop any and all magical activity that may do the Empire harm. For many years, I was told that this was the definitive RPG to be homegrown out of Italy. And while I know that's not exactly the case anymore, it will stand as my gateway drug into the Italian role-playing scene. Now that it's translated in my hands after so long, how does it pan out? Let's find out. Strap in, folks. This is going to be a long one. Lex Arcana runs at about 310 pages, and the best way I can describe its design is marbled, be it the black marble between chapters or the white pages with the kind of colors you'd see applied to marble. There's rarely any points in the text that are hard to read or require book jumping. However, would it kill the book to have an index? It's not that hard, people. As a member of the Cohors Arcana, we're more of an investigator role than the military role of the Praetorian Guard. We'll be exploring this with Vincentis Novation, in both character and work iteration on his sheets. As such, the character creation method is split between the aforementioned character sheet and work sheet. We'll be doing the latter first. The first step is Virtutes. The basic ability scores we'll be modifying later. And we'll be using the random method of rolling 2d6 six times. In our case, our starting values are 9, 7, 12, 8, 10, and 9. These scores are then associated to the Virtutes, in which case we have Coordinatio 9, Vigor 12, Octoritas 10, Ingenium 7, Ratio 8, and Sensibilitas 9. The second step is Province, where the Custodes came from within the vast Empire. Our choice of Province also grants the points to Persia, or Skill Groups. Of the many provinces, we'll be going with Germania, giving us the following modifiers. De Bello 6, De Corpore 3, De Magia 3, De Natura 4, De Scientia 1, and De Societe 1. The third step is Parite. Like I said before, these are skill groups. Each of these is based on virtues that are split, along with adding a province modifier. Now each Parite's final score must range between 3 and 18, and at least one must be 15. 
which will be important later. For example, an octoritas of 10 can be split into a 6 and 4 towards de bello and de societe. In this case, the final parite are de bello 17, de corpore 14, de natura 13, de magia 11, de scientia 8, and de societe 10. The final stage of the worksheet is the age modifiers, as well as the final virtues, which will be modified by the age of the custodes. We'll be going with the young age, which grants a plus three modifier to all six virtues. Thus, our final virtues are Cordnatio 12, Arturitas 12, Ratio 11, Vigor 15, Ingenium 7, and Sensibilitas 12. With the worksheet done, we'll be moving its materials over to the character sheet proper. Now, the first step of the character sheet is background specialities, which are specializations on the paratech and we'll be picking three as a head start of sorts. Of these specialities, we gain a plus one bonus to two of them, and a plus two to the third one. We'll go with swords as our plus two, as well as brawling and exploration at plus one. Our second step is office, the closest thing to class in Lex Arcana. In a move similar to the days of AD&D, you need to qualify for offices instead of choosing them, based on which parata is over 15. This also grants a combat talent associated with the office. Now we'll be going with Fighter, and thus have the combat talent A Hero's Duty, which allows us to engage against more opponents than normal. Our choice of office also determines our tutelary deity that we can utilize in invocations. In our case, we have Mars, granting us the Mars Victor invocation. The third step is Tyrosinium, a reflection of the training within their office. We can choose two specialties from the office's associated parata, in our case De Bello, and gain a plus one rating. We'll be going with Spears and Tactics at plus one. The fourth step is Hit Points and Pietas. The latter is used as a resource for invocations. The former is our sum of Coordinatio and Vigor, plus three for being a fighter, which gives us a total of 30. Similarly, Pietas is the sum of Ratio and Sensibilitas, minus one for being a fighter, so our Pietas is 22. Step five is experience multipliers, which represent your aptitude for learning in certain fields. We have 24 points to spend on multipliers with a minimum of times two and a maximum of times 10. The highest multiplier must be applied to the parata of our office. With this in mind, we'll go with de bello times six, de corpore times four, de pax denorum times four, and the remaining categories at times two. Now most of these categories are based on the paratai, with the exception of most Aconorum and Pax Deorum. The former is tied to learning new invocations, while the latter is rooted in advancing within your office's rank. During play, you convert experience into curriculum points based on these multipliers. Step six is equipment, which is split between standard gear and war gear. The former is a set of gear supplied by the Praetorian Guard, while the latter is your weapons and armor, which is limited only by encumbrance, based on your hit points as a cap. For war gear, we'll go with a spear, spatha, loricus, squamata armor, and a siphius shield. A couple interesting avenues with character creation is the ability to create your own origin province in a life path-like system, as well as the inclusion of the assassin office, which appears to be treated with an at-your-own-risk approach since assassins aren't exactly going to be out in the open, because, well, they're assassins. As for character creation itself, I do like it in parts. I was confused by the use of the worksheet part as it seemed to be a pointless gesture at first, but it makes sense in practice. That said, I do think that the game could be a little looser with specialties, or at the very least not skew it so heavily towards the office that you're choosing. At the very least, it doesn't do full point by like I feared. So all in all, it's a decent system, that might take some adapting with all the use of Latin. Most of the games we've covered in this series have a set die type that's rolled against a difficulty number. That stops here. Lex Arcana uses what it calls a dice point system that allows you to use any combination of dice so long as the total number of faces don't exceed the virtue plus specialty you're rolling. The only rule is that you cannot roll more than three die types. For example, Vincentis's Cordnatio is 12, which means that this could be rolled as a 2d6, a 1d10 plus 1d2, a 2d5 plus 1d2, or a 1d12. You get the idea. In addition, there is an exploding effect activated if you roll the maximum result on all dice. 
which is known as a fate roll. It makes for an interesting risk-reward. This is compared with a difficulty number that can range from 3 to 18, with the difference between your roll and the difficulty rating acting as a degree of success. 1 to 3 is marginal, 4 to 6 is complete, and 7 or higher is exceptional. Combat is rooted in contested roles between attackers and defenders in close combat, with the difference between the two referred to as attack potential that can multiply the damage of that weapon. Damage is not set, but is instead treated like dice points that you roll. This is complicated if fighting multiple opponents, where the outnumbered character has to roll against all of the de bello rolls of the enemy, who may apply the results of previous rolls to the next one as bonus dice points. I liken it to a Souls-like, where the game is skewed much more heavily towards one-on-one -on -one fights, and gets tricky with more opponents. Range combat, on the other hand, is much simpler. Merely a single die roll based on range. I'd also point out that there's not an initiative system, more that the disengaged act first, then the engaged do, as it seems to aim for simultaneousness. Now, in normal circumstances, I get into the lack of detail or maneuvers with the combat, but the way it's presented here, it's implied to be far more volatile in other games, leaning more towards combat in swords and sorcery affairs than anything else. I do like that there's no builds that are unviable for combat, though, as even the non-combat seeming offices can contribute in their own way. It's definitely not for those who prefer map combat, though. Character advancement is something I normally don't talk about unless there's a specific um, approach. And that's the case here, as it's kind of level-based, but at the same time not. At the end of an adventure, experience points are doled out based on the adventure value that the GM established along with an Ingenium and Arcturitas rolls by the players. These are rolled against a difficulty of 3, and each degree of success adding an additional experience point. These experience points are converted into curriculum points based on the multipliers you have. Now, curriculum points are used to improve Hershey and Specialties. The former costs 100 per increase, plus 20 for each point above um, 20, and Specialties cost 20 times the new level. Advancing in most Arcanum, unlike the other Peritas, increases your rank, with each rank after the first granting you a bonus to resistance rolls that goes straight to results, not to your dice points. It allows you to choose from several benefits each rank, ranging from a plus one to a virtue or plus three hit points, the ability to improve your war gear, granting plus two damage to weapons, plus two protection to armor, or plus one parry to a shield. These benefits don't stack on the same equipment item, I should note. You could also get an assistant who may take two specialties and have their difficulty reduced by one level, or a trained animal like a wolf or an owl that can grant their own set of advantages. Now, advancing in Pax Denorum grants three to the maximum pietas and grants another invocation that can be selected between the official pantheon and the de ignentes. The former have a standard effect, and a much stronger one depending on whether or not your chosen office matches it. The latter concerns the more primitive pantheon of Italy. Many of these provide beneficial effects as opposed to the effects of divination. However, we're not quite done, as the world of Lex Arcana places some attention on magic, even if it's not the kind you'd think. Lex Arcana has a magic system rooted in ritual and divination, so anyone expecting to throw fireballs in Rome is going to be disappointed. In other games, divination might be its own field of magic, among others. But here, there are six disciplines of divination. Precognition, clairvoyance, retrocognition, interpreting omens, interpreting dreams, and favor of the gods. Each discipline is associated with its own set of rituals, and there's eight that every character starts with. To use a ritual, you have to make a demagic roll against a difficulty based on the discipline used. All rituals cost pietas, and you can fail forward of sorts by paying additional pietas equal to the difference between the roll and the difficulty. Even if you do that, it's still going to be a marginal success. However, a ritual will not be something that you can just fire and forget with. You do need resources and time, with each ritual requiring its own components. And of course, each can be used only once per adventure. And before we finish off, I want to go over some of the expansions, as I, in full disclosure, was a backer for this game. Even if I was late. There's a fair amount of material that came along with the core book, 
but we'll be covering two particular materials. Egyptus is the first one we'll go into, and it delves into Realm's provincial presence in Egypt, as well as the status of this region in the 5th century. In addition, there's a bunch of new rules to go along with a new discipline of divination in the form of necromancy. The divination rituals associated with it are Nekia, the summoning of dead spirits, Psychostasi, weighing the piety of the recently defeat, deceased, and Kabalsis, allowing temporary passage into the realm of the dead. A solid work overall. Encyclopedia Arcana is more of a fluff book than a crunch one. It's meant to give detail to the world of Imperial Rome in the 5th century. Now, there's not a whole lot here that's technically new, but it just gives context to what was already present in the core book. I'd say it's an effective gazetteer for life in the 5th century. So because of that, it's more geared towards lore hounds and the GM than anything else. Now let's get something out of the way. Lex Arcana is not meant to be played as generic Rome, even fantasy Rome. It has a specific angle that it's tackling, and the design is dedicated wholly towards that. Furthermore, Lex Arcana is a game that is geared towards mystery and investigative play. To say it has more in common with Dark Heresy or Knight's Black Agents than it does anything else. It's best to look at it as a supernatural investigation game, rather than get too hung up on the Rome part of it. That's just there for context. That said, there is a lot to like here. The detail is in its class of its own. The dice system is inspired and is one of those why didn't anybody think of this sooner kind of setups. And I appreciate its dedication to emulating a specific style rather than going for full-on kitchen sink. That said, those who prefer a higher style of fantasy will be a little out of luck here. And I can see some of those who stay being a little overwhelmed by the detail given into the setting. And again, its use of Latin. I'd say the setting isn't quite as kitchen sink as others, but it's something to make note of. All that said, I give Lex Arcana a stamp of strongly recommended. Anyone who likes historical fantasy should get this book yesterday, especially if they like a focus on antiquity. It's not going to be as wide of a sandbox as, say, BRP Rome, but there's going to be plenty to offer in a way that won't be too overwhelming, so long as you play by its rules.